Hi there, I'm Dr Janelle Sinclair and I'm a biochemist and natural medicine practitioner. So today I'm going to tell you all about vitamin D, how it impacts your mental well-being and I'll discuss deficiency signs and how to test and treat a deficiency. And make sure you stay around to the end so, to, so you can find out about any potential side effects and any interactions with other medications. And if you're new here, consider subscribing and hit that bell button so that you can be notified about our new weekly content. So let's get started. Vitamin D is a steroid vitamin made you by your body when the skin is exposed to the sun. So it's often referred to as a sun vitamin. It's most known for its role in calcium absorption and keeping our bones strong. But more recently, research shows it's important for the immune system, for muscles, the heart and lungs. It has anti-cancer effects and is important for brain development and mood. Vitamin D deficiency is actually a huge problem around the world. In the US, it's estimated that 41.6 of people are vitamin D deficient, with a staggering 82.1% of people of colour and 69.2% of Hispanics having low vitamin D levels. The situation is similar in New Zealand where I live, with 48% of adults and 57% of newborns being deficient in vitamin D. So what are the health impacts and symptoms of a vitamin D deficiency? Let's consider them now. The most common symptoms of a vitamin D deficiency include a poor immune system, fatigue and tiredness, bone, muscle and back pain, hair loss, bone loss, poor wound healing and depression. Winter depression or seasonal affective disorder is thought to occur because of a vitamin D deficiency in winter due to not getting enough sun exposure. Some research suggests that fibromyalgia, psychosis or bipolar disorder can be caused by a severe vitamin D deficiency. And I've personally seen clients whose fatigue, anxiety and panic attacks were resolved after taking high dose vitamin D. So, how does low levels of vitamin D affect the brain and mood? Well, vitamin D is necessary for creating serotonin and dopamine, and these are two important brain chemicals that have been, have been described as being calming or happy hormones. Depression and other mental health conditions can be caused by inflammation of the brain, and you can think of it like this, that the brain is on fire. Well, vitamin D helps dampen down that fire to healthy levels, and it also stimulates brain repair. So you're probably wondering now, am I lacking in vitamin D? Well, let's discuss some risk factors and then go on to vitamin D testing. There are seven common risk factors for vitamin D deficiency. And the most important factor is that you're not going outside and having your skin exposed to the sun. So do you have an office or an inside job? Or do you avoid the sun or wear sunscreen? Having dark skin or being older in age are risk factors for vitamin D deficiency too. If you're older or have dark skin, your skin just doesn't make vitamin D as effectively as someone that's younger and has pale skin. I've seen this regularly with clients in my clinic. And if you're overweight, not eating much fish or dairy, live far away from the equator, or don't go out in the sun without sunscreen, it's possible that you're low in vitamin D too. So how do you test your vitamin D levels? Well, vitamin D is a very simple test that you can request through your doctor, or through a lab, or even online between, and it costs between 30 and 70 US dollars depending on where you are in the world. In New Zealand unfortunately is not a government funded test so you have to go to the lab and self request it and pay for it yourself. The test that you want to ask for is the 25 hydroxy vitamin D test. Now let's just talk a little about interpretation. A result of less than 20 nanograms per mil or 50 nanomoles per litre is considered to be a severe deficiency. 
So if your levels are below this, you really need to supplement vitamin Ds at high doses, which your medical practitioner will advise you on. I personally follow the Vitamin D Council's recommendation, however, that there is an optimal level of vitamin D, and that's 50 nanograms per mil or 125 nanomoles per litre. And any result below this requires some level of vitamin D supplementation. But however, if your levels are above 100 nanograms per mil or 250 nanomoles per litre, you need to stop your vitamin D supplements immediately. Your vitamin D is approaching toxic levels, which may be harmful for your health. So if you do want to find out, um, so if you do find out that you've got low vitamin D levels, how do you increase it? Well, let's talk about vitamin D treatment now. There's two main ways to get vitamin D. One, exposing your bare skin to sunlight, and two, taking vitamin D supplements. Unfortunately, you can't get the right amount of vitamin D that your body needs from food. Although there is a small amount of vitamin D in fish, eggs, butter, mushrooms, and parsley. So let's first talk about getting enough vitamin D from the sun. The amount of time that you need to spend in the sun is going to be very different from someone else. If you have darker skin, live far from the equator, or are older or overweight, you need longer in the sun to get adequate vitamin D. The best time of the day is at noon time when the sun is high, and you should ideally expose half of your body's skin to the sun. The Vitamin D Council recommends that you should stay in the sun for half of the amount of time that it takes you to burn. That way it protects, um, it balances your need for vitamin D, but protects your skin from sun damage. For some people, like me, that would mean exposing half of your body to the sun for as little as five minutes daily. But for others, it could be up to two hours to get your vitamin D requirements if your skin is very dark. Now I'd love to know, do you spend enough time in the sun every day exposing half of your body to the sun? It's not a very easy thing to do, is it? Well, give me a yes or a no in the comment section below. Well, luckily supplementing with vitamin D is very easy and safe. Um, and I suggest on the days that you're not out in the sun for long enough that you take a vitamin D supplement. Vitamin D absorption is increased when you take it with food, so take it with meals. So there's a wide range of dosage recommendations for vitamin D in adults. The Vitamin D Council recommends 5,000 IU per day. IU stands for international units. However, the Endocrine Society recommends 1,500 to 2,000 IU per day. There are studies that have shown that 4,000 IU is effective for people with depression, so that's a reasonable dosage to consider. Another recommendation, and this is my preference, is that you base your level of vitamin D supplementation on your blood test results. But because it would take too long for me to explain that further in this video, I've created an interpretation and do dosage guideline document for vitamin D, and I'll leave the link in the description so that you can um, download it. If you do choose to take vitamin D above around 2,000 IU per day, I suggest that you do a blood test in three months' time and then once or twice a year after that. The maximum dosage of vitamin D that is safe is 10,000 international units per day. Now, let's discuss any side effects of vitamin D and any potential interactions with other medications. Vitamin D is a well-tolerated -toler medication, so you should have no concern with taking it alongside antidepressant or an anti-anxiety medication. If you're on any creams for psoriasis on a thiazide diuretic or any medications for atrial fibrillation, talk to your medical doctor before taking vitamin D supplements. If you have primary hyperparathyroidism, lymphoma, a granulomatosis disease, kidney stones, kidney disease or liver disease, you should get advice from a specialist. 
Because vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, it has the potential to build up in the body and be toxic at high levels. The best way to avoid this, as we've discussed already, is to do regular testing to ensure you achieve optimal but not too high levels. I'd recommend that you retest your um, levels after three months of starting vitamin D and then every six months after that. Now you know that a vitamin D deficiency could be contributing to your depression, fatigue or anxiety and I'd suggest that you get a blood test done ASAP. So that you know how to interpret these results and how much supplementation you should be taking, I've created an interpretation guide for vitamin D. You can download the guide for free by clicking the link below this video. So do you think you may be vitamin D deficient? Or have you ever had a low vitamin D blood test result? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with anyone that may benefit from it. And if you'd like me to create more videos on natural strategies to improve mental well-being, hit that subscribe button as it really does encourage me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.